So for example, in the context of the, um, the e-commerce mobile uh, e-commerce um, website, you can have a CRUD type operation in, in, for an order. So you can create an order, you can read or review the order, you can update or modify the order, um, and then you can delete that order. But then there's, there's some business rules there. You can't update or modify the order once it is it checked out. So essentially what does that mean is once you create an order, you checked out, you, you paid the amount and then you gave the billing information and then you actually said order created, then it can't be modified any further. But you can modify that before that. So what do you call that as? That's the cart. So you create another object called cart. So it's basically a shopping, it's a holdup, placeholder for all the products, items. You can change everything there. You can actually add more item, more number of the same item. You can delete the items. You can do whatever you want in that particular cart. And once you check that out and say that I'm going to purchase and you say buy now, the payment goes through. So in which case that cart is no more a cart that actually that object called cart gets converted into the order. So you are creating an order then. And then once that order is created, it can review it. You can do all that kind of stuff. So all these business rules around how you were going to you know, create the functionality, how you're going to achieve that functionality. And similarly, previously we used to have, um, you know, people should register to the site. Uh, you should be able to uh, purchase anything or you, can, you cannot even browse the catalog of a particular website unless you register. First, you need to register to the website and then you need to log in. So you need to log in and only then can you actually see all the products, what products they have, and then you can, can kind of delve deeper, click on the product. It shows all the details, the price of the item, um, and then uh, the, the re description of the item, maybe the thumbnail or images of the item, reviews of the item can only be seen only after you log in. So that's again some kind of business rule. So you're talking about creating a user there, right? So you're creating the user, you're, uh, you're basically updating the user details, your address or your billing information, and then you can delete a user if they no longer want to have the account with this particular website. So all of these kind of rules, you're going to um, identify, you're going to actually create all these crux the, for the, all the entities is what we call. And then we, what we do with FP is basically we do the, um, the, the analysis in terms of what is coming in, in terms of the input screens, the pages. So you enter the data, so you're selecting the, um, the different items and you're creating the card. So that's basically the input screen there. So the form views, all the form views, all the different kind of login registration, all of these could be the input where the user enters the details. And the output screens are basically what would be shown on the screen or what is basically something like a report that could come out of the data. So these are called output screens of pages. And then you come up with different database tables. What kind of database tables need to be created? Um, do they have to be uh, recorded or updated or do they have to be referred to? Just like I make a query to the database and then get the information and, and you know, work on that information. So all of these, we need to identify all the tables that are required for us to do that. And then within each table, how many records could be there? And for each record, so for example, item, when you add an item in the shopping cart, that creates a record in the cart object, right? So that item will have again quantity, item description, item ID or whatever it is, all of these again for that. So it creates a record whenever you add an item into the catalog and you say add to the cart or add to the shop. Um, so you create that and then you click on that, it creates a record in the background, in the back end, and that is going to create, add more and more records to the cart. And if you have got like five items that you clicked on and added to the catalog, you need to have five records in the database. So all of these details are required to be analyzed. And then you come up with the final figure saying, I've got, let's say 10 input screens, I've got five output screens, and then I've got so many database tables and so on and so forth. So basically that's, that's pretty much what an FP works with. And then FP also looks at the aspect of the specific language that you're using. You're using Java or you're using um, uh, .NET or using Python, whichever language that you're proposing to use for development of this functionality. You need to also add that because each one has got its own complexity factor. So they have got some tables that, they, that we would refer. And finally, you've got some figure to actually say that this is the total effort that would be uh, that total number of function points, 500 function points or whatever. So that's the basic concept of a function point. And you'll be uh, interested to know that's the same kind of a concept is actually carried forward with the use case point and finally the, even the story points. 
But of course, the concept is slightly different. We have still talking about uh, the functionality. We are still talking about the analysis in terms of this division of or decomposition. But then how you're going to arrive at that is slightly different, which is what we're going to look 